Hi, this is Shara from Brex. Imagine you're setting up an online store with Brex. You want to provide your users with a way to filter products by color, size, or price. But until now, achieving this in Brex meant either spending a lot of time on custom coding or relying on third party plugins, which might be an overkill for your use case. That's no longer an issue. Today, we're introducing a new feature in Bricks 1.9.6, the Query Sort Filter. This feature is currently in its experimental stage and brings to your website the ability to sort and filter content in real time without needing to refresh the page. It leverages AJAX-powered filter elements to streamline the way you interact with content. Now, before we dive into the fun part, here's an important notice. As of the recording of this video, the query sort filter feature is still experimental. We strongly advise against using it on production websites at this stage. Also be aware that it may conflict with other filtering plugins. The current implementation limits filtering and sorting to post queries and only impacts the outer layer in nested query scenarios. We are eagerly looking for your feedback to further develop and enhance this feature. So to try out this feature, you have to first enable it from your Brick settings. From your WordPress dashboard, go to Brick settings and then select general and then activate enable query sort filter live search. In this video, I'll be giving you a showcase of the query sort filter feature. We'll start by adding a live Ajax search and setting up a color filter. And for the other elements, they're already pre-built on our demo shop page. So I'll just walk you through their settings. In the main content, the left column includes an accordion that contains various filters like price range, stock status, category, manufacture date, and we also have a reset button. On the right column, this is where we display the results count and sort options. We also have our product listings, which are all dynamically handled within a query loop. In the query loop settings, the post type is set to products. And at the bottom, there is a pagination element with enable Ajax checked. So let's start by adding live search functionality to this query loop. To do so, let's click on add element, search for filter search. We're going to select our query loop as the target query. And that's all. We can now search for a beanie and we can find a beanie. Next, let's add a radio filter for the product color. We're going to click on add element again. We're gonna search for filter radio. Let's add the filter radio. Next, under source, we're going to choose taxonomy. And under taxonomy, we're going to pick product color. And that's it. Now we just have to update the filter index, which is going to update our database to query the product colors and update all the options. This will save and reload the builder. And we should be ready to go. So now let's explore the existing elements and their settings. Let's start with the price range slider. Uh, this slider is sourced from a custom field, specifically the underscore price meta key from WooCommerce. And the slider is designed to automatically calculate the minimum and maximum values. Next, let's explore the stock status. Here we have a filter radio element with the mode set to button. The action is filter and we are sourcing from a custom field underscore stock underscore status from WooCommerce again. Now this stock status meta key from WooCommerce can return two values either in stock or out of stock. 
So instead of just outputting that value of in stock or out of stock, we can add some custom option label mapping. So we added some custom option label mapping to change, for example, in stock to in stock with space in between and then an emoji. And we've done the same for out of stock with out of stock, which makes it more user friendly. And now for the category, we're using a filter checkbox element. And the source for this is taxonomy, specifically product categories. We've also enabled hierarchical display as these categories are hierarchical. As for the manufacture date, this actually uses a custom field that we added to our products post type through ACF, uh, which is an ACF date picker field. So I'll show you an example of a product with a set date and how this field operates in our filter. Okay, so let's add a range between the 13th, 12, 23 to 15, 12, 23. And as you can see, we have a result here. So if we click on the product, and then we click on edit product, you'll see that we have the manufacture date set to 14, 12. So that was correct. As for the sort by dropdown, uh, this is a filter select element where the action is set to sort. It includes a repeater field which allows us to add multiple sorting options. And for each option, you can set a label, choose the source like meta value or publish date and decide the order, either ascending or descending. So for example, for the price low high, we chose the source as meta value and the meta key is underscore price again from WooCommerce and the order is ascending. And then we do the opposite for the price from high to low. And for the newest products first, we're going to choose the published date and we're going to set the order to descending. And then for the oldest, we just do the reverse. Now you might have also noticed that the header has a live search input field. And so let me show you how it works. So I can search, for example, for a beanie. And as you can see, I get this section which has the two results. And so this section did not exist before. And if I click away, the section disappears. So you might be wondering why the results section was not being rendered on the page loads uh, or it disappears when you click away. Well, it's really easy. You just have to write 300 lines of JavaScript or no, just kidding. It's actually just a single toggle in your query loop settings. You can turn on the live search and then you can provide the ID for the element that you want to hide uh, basically before performing a search. And that's it. That's the magic here. And here's a bonus teeny tiny feature for you. Let's say I search for phone and it does not exist in my products. And when I do that, I get this nice design for the no results found. So instead of just no results text, you can now select a template that will show up when the query loop has no results. So this can be your way of saying, hey, we can be fancy even when there's nothing to show. And that wraps up our showcase of the new query sort filter feature in Bricks. I'm really excited to see how we will put this to use and hear your thoughts. Since this feature is still experimental, your feedback is incredibly valuable. It's what will shape and refine this feature in its next stages and takes it to the next level. For more details and up-to-date information, be sure to check out our Academy article on this feature. Uh, we've got plenty more updates and tutorials on the way. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.